Hi LEGO fans! Hogwarts Castle has been recreated in LEGO many times. The biggest and most spectacular came in 2018, but we also got the 4842 version in 2010, 5378 in 2007, 4757 in 2004, and I think it's about time we revisited the very first version. Today we're going back to 2001 and I'm going to be refreshing, rebuilding and reviewing Set number 4709, the original Hogwarts Castle from LEGO Harry Potter. We'll also be taking a close up look at the old school yellow faced minifigures and a peculiar glow in the dark Snape, because why not? In 2001, this was the biggest LEGO Harry Potter set and retailed for 90 US dollars or 80 Great British Pounds. At the time of filming in 2020, this is worth about $273 mint in box or about $110 used like this. I do have the original box for this, but it's certainly seen better days. Unfortunately, the previous owner used gaffer tape to keep this shut. Tatty it may be, but the really cool thing is that it does this. Originally, this would have been covered in clear plastic, and in the toy store you'd be able to open the lid and see what's inside. Thankfully, we can still appreciate the artwork on the inside of the lid. In case there was any doubt, we can see this was based on Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, although they seem to have spelt it incorrectly. In true Hogwarts tradition, we can see the students arriving by boat. This also showcases one of the interactive functions, dual-sided house banners in case a change of colours is in order, and we even see Peeves the Poltergeist causing chaos. Who wouldn't want to buy this set? The back of the box is in much better condition and shows some of the alternate builds. Yes, LEGO used to give you other stuff you could build with the bricks. You could build a much smaller scale version of the castle, recreate the jetty where their first years land, or build a library for Hermione. LEGO's marketing people would also like to remind us that many more sets are available in this 2001 wave. The 682 piece part count includes 9 early LEGO Harry Potter minifigures. We've got a HP002 Hermione Granger who appeared in 3 sets, a HP007 Ron Weasley who also appeared in the last set I reviewed, this magnificent chap is the HP008 Albus Dumbledore who was found in 4 sets, we also have an equally common HP009 Rubius Hagrid, a HP010 Peeves the Poltergeist who also appeared in 4705 Snape's class, a decidedly creepy HP012 Severus Snape with glow-in-the-dark face for some reason. There's also an exclusive HP015 Gryffindor Knight statue who hides a secret we'll reveal later. Of course we have to have a Harry Potter and this is the HP036 version with the purple cape. Finally, we have the HP040 Draco Malfoy, who appeared in way more sets than he deserved to. I picked this up on eBay about 8 months ago for $97 plus shipping, and I wish I'd remembered it came with instructions. I remember when this set arrived, I caught the mailman whispering to the package. Apparently, he's a parcel tongue. <laughs> to save you from seeing all the dust, I took it apart and gave it a clean. Now all we need to do is put it back together. As always, you won't miss any of the action, so sit back and relax and enjoy a 90 second speed build!
and here is the completed 4709 Hogwarts Castle from LEGO Harry Potter! Build time today was 1 hour and 25 minutes, and despite the modest 682 piece part count, this is actually quite a substantial set. We do of course have those 9 minifigures which we're going to be taking a look at later, and we have this rather splendid Hogwarts castle which is built in 3 parts. We've got a small building which represents the boathouse, a very tall and thin great hall, and this impressive looking tower which I believe is going to be Gryffindor Tower. You'll see why in just a minute. After taking the Hogwarts Express from King's Cross to Hogsmeade, first years are taken on a boat ride across the Great Lake in something like this. A lantern at the front of the boat provides illumination, but for the most part you're going to want to gawk at the castle. For the most part the boat is one large moulded piece. There are some ore brackets, but magical folk don't seem to need those. The exterior also has some really nice moulding showing the planks of wood. The boat is a decent size and can easily accommodate 3 to 4 minifigures. Included in the set we have a little boathouse. This would be where the students disembark to climb the stairs to the Great Hall. The building stands about 8 inches tall and matches the colour scheme of Hogwarts. As you'd expect with an early Harry Potter set we have tan walls and sun green roofs. There are also some flames to guide the flotilla of boats, and a really nice printed panel with rock detail. Speaking of rock, we have this large rocky element in the dark grey colour. We don't have any decoration on the reverse, but it certainly is a nice way to arrive at Hogwarts. Of course on arrival the first years are taken to this place for their initiation. It's a very slender and drafty looking great hall. One thing you will notice about this set is that it's very tall. The Great Hall stands at 12.5 inches and it's not the biggest part of the building. By now you've probably noticed the unusual roof which is not made out of Lego. These are in fact thin plastic sheets which are in very good condition for a 20 year old Lego set. It's secured at the top to stop it getting lost and then we have this slope to keep the shape of the roof. Up here we have a chocolate owl which is made by the same people who make chocolate frogs. We also have not one bat, but two bats and thankfully not a pangolin in sight. There's also a tan turret complete with sand green roof. These are both colours synonymous with the early Hogwarts sets. The detail along the roofline is both decorative and practical. Those triangle pieces help to keep the plastic roof in place. The structure of the Great Hall is tall and slender and probably not very strong. The set does incorporate quite a lot of large elements which helps to keep the overall part count down. For example we have a large rock element down at the bottom in the old dark grey colour. Pyromancers rejoice because we also have lots of flame elements in this set. We certainly need those flames because these windows aren't going to keep out the cold. Of course the exterior is all well and good but we want to see what's inside. The interior is not exactly packed floor to ceiling but thankfully there is not a sticker in sight. There's not enough room for an end of term feast but you can definitely get a few minifigures in here. On the left hand side we have one of the house tables complete with a couple of yellow goblets. I was worried that somebody had got a howler but we don't see one of those until the Chamber of Secrets. Sitting on the bench it looks like somebody's lost a chocolate frog card. Contrary to what I said only a moment ago there is one stickered piece inside this set and it is this fantastic hologram card. This is of course from a chocolate frog and depicts the great Dumbledore. Speaking of the great wizard we have this impressive chair for the headmaster. I really like the colour contrast of the unusual purple offset against that yellow. You may notice the telltale hinge which hints at a secret hiding beneath the chair. Hidden beneath we have some kind of secret spell and a key. Maybe this unlocks a door on the forbidden third floor corridor. The 1x2 tile is a printed piece with some really nice metallic details. Also down here looking for crumbs we have this grey lego rat. Helping to combat all of the cold that's coming in through the windows we have a cosy fireplace. Representing the fire we have trans neon orange studs but the fire does look like it might be hiding something. Popping the lid on this box reveals a pink crystal. Sucking away the smoke and toxic fumes we have this large chimney breast. This also hides a secret. It's Peeves the Poltergeist. Oh Potter you rotter, oh what have you done? You're killing off students, you think it's good fun. Ok wrong movie but you get the idea. Flanking the fireplace we have some particularly fancy lion head elements. These are beautifully moulded and make a fantastic addition to the set. I love the amount of relief used to give this a very striking 3D look. The Great Hall is usually illuminated by thousands of floating candles. 
Okay, these are flames and not candles, but I love the transparent pieces used to give the appearance that they're floating. Hanging from the ceiling, we have a really nice house banner. This shows the colours and the emblem of Slytherin, indicating that they're winning the house cup. Or at least until a few bonus points are awarded and it's time for a change of colours. Also up in the roof space, we have a mysterious white coloured Lego rat, a mystery ball displaying some kind of green apparition, and it looks like somebody's lost a key. I hope this isn't the one for the room where Fluffy's guarding the trapdoor. Uh oh, I should not have said that. After the feast and the sorting ceremony, the students are sent off to their houses. In the case of Hermione, Ron and Harry, their destination is Gryffindor Tower. This is by far the tallest part of the set and stands an impressive 17 inches high. At the top we have a single grey flag which reminds me of the first LEGO Harry Potter advent calendar. Immediately underneath we have one of those impressive sand green roof pieces. There's some really nice texturing here for the roof tiles. At the side we have a small turret, and on the other side there's an owl but this time made from black plastic. Up on the third floor we have an elegant leaded window. I wonder if we'll find Fluffy inside. I probably shouldn't have said that. Moving down the tower, check out these two quarter circle wall pieces. These are printed with more of that rock design. Up here we have an outdoor terrace complete with two more owls. I think there's a very good chance the white one is meant to be Hedwig. This part of the set is hinged and you can actually change the angle of the smaller tower. The smaller tower again has a turret complete with sand green roof. The lower levels of Gryffindor Tower are somewhat more functional and less attractive. The colours of the parts used here are a little bit of a mishmash. Even the trans orange flame cannot distract us from this rather incohesive design. Saying that, we do have some more printed pieces and I'm intrigued by the stairs that lie beyond. Let's venture inside and see what we can see. Again the interior is a little sparse but there is some cool stuff to check out. The thing you notice first about this part of the castle is the impressive spiral staircase. We'll climb those stairs in just a moment, but before that, let's check out this library. At the front we have a reading table complete with magnifying glass. It comes in this rather nice trans purple colour and actually magnifies. Underneath the table seems to be some kind of removable box. Inside the box is a small one by one tile with a printed spell book. Peering towards the back of the room we have a bookshelf which is sparsely stocked. Checking out the other side there appears to be some kind of interactive function here. It's very simple and tilts the bookshelf forward. I'm not certain why the books fly off the shelf, but I'm guessing it has something to do with Peeves. The books are actually really nicely printed. This one seems to be some kind of herbology book, and we've got a fungi on the side there, and a selection of toadstools on the back. We also have this green book here, which seems to be about potions. Here you can see all the smoke and the magic happening. There's a test tube, and then some more flasks on the back. And then I have a confession to make, because this is not the correct book. It's not even the right way around. Uh, this shows a really nicely printed dragon, and then just some decoration on the spine and then a spider around the back, but this is not the book that's meant to come with this set. What we should have is an exclusive book with a ghost face pattern. You'll probably recognise this as something the students encountered in the restricted section. On the ground floor of the other tower we have a most peculiar thing. Looping around between the fireplace and the wall you'll find a silicon band. By turning the wall you can turn the fireplace around. This reveals a rare transclear treasure chest which only appears in two sets. The treasure within is not exactly well hidden. Inside we have two crystals, one yellow, and then we have this blue crystalline substance. I didn't know Walter White was a wizard. Leading the first years up to the Gryffindor common room, we have a particularly dangerous looking staircase. I imagine the liability insurance at Hogwarts must be astronomical. At the top of the stairs and guarding the entrance, we have the portrait of the fat lady. Now if only I could remember the password. Perhaps you guys can help me out. What was the first password mentioned in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's or Sorcerer's Stone? Let me know in the comments and you can earn yourself a heart. Now we find ourselves in the rather sparsely furnished Gryffindor Tower. On guard inside the entrance we have the Gryffindor Knight. By rotating the Knight, which is easier said than done, you can actually reveal a secret. There's a hidden trans neon purple crystal. Also in this room we find a lever connected to a chain. This activates a secret up on the next floor. We'll check that out in just a moment. Peering into the room beyond you may recognise some familiar friends. 
It's the outdoor terrace, and here we find the white and grey owls. The upper part of the smaller tower is completely empty, although the instructions do suggest removing this and using the upper part as a makeshift owlery. Moving up the tower, we find this small room which seems to be some kind of laboratory. As well as having coloured jars on top, the bench seems to be hinged. In fact, if we activate the lever on the floor below, the other end of the chain reveals a secret. In here, we find a mysterious golden key. Finally, at the tippy top of the tower, we have somewhere to study the stars. We can actually remove the roof to make this easier to get to. Here we have a pretty basic telescope and a book containing a rather nice printed star chart. So those were the buildings of Hogwarts Castle and very fine buildings they were too. What's that, Mr. Filch? Students, out of bed! Oh, so they are. We'd best go check them out. We've got nine magically magnificent minifigures, including Hermione Granger, Ron Weasley, Albus Dumbledore, Rubius Hagrid, Peeves, Severus Snape, Gryffindor Knight, Harry Potter, and Draco Malfoy. The first of our yellow-faced minifigures is leader of the Society for the Promotion of Elfish Welfare, aka Spew. This is the HP002 minifigure which appears in three sets and is worth about $5. Her costume consists of light grey legs, even though I'm pretty sure she wore a dark grey skirt, and a printed torso which shows her wearing a white shirt, Gryffindor tie, and Gryffindor school jumper. Again, this is printed on light grey, even though the uniform was really dark grey. Ron, Harry and Hermione all wear the same Gryffindor school uniform. This should save us a little bit of time. Hermione, Ron and Draco all wear one of these black capes with printed stars and a copyright logo for some reason. The brown hairpiece does a really good job of recreating the bushy hair which is described in the books. We do see Emma Watson looking a little dishevelled in the first movie, but that quickly changes. The facial expression doesn't really look like Hermione. She looks more like a 50-year-old woman who's wearing way too much makeup. Although this doesn't really look like Hermione, it's fascinating to see what Lego were thinking about 20 years ago. Keeping the legs, torso and cape, and swapping out the head and the hair, we have the HP007 Ronald Billius Weasley. He appears in six sets and is worth about $3. His middle name comes from Uncle Billius, who is said to have gone loopy towards the end of his life and died 24 hours after seeing a Grimm. This minifigure is in great condition, but the uniform is a carbon copy of what Hermione was wearing. The facial print is surprisingly good and was used on a bunch of Ron Weasley minifigures. I like the freckles and that dopey Rupert Grint grin. If the hand-me-down robe wasn't a giveaway, the hair certainly is. Like all of the Weasleys, Ron has ginger hair. What's particularly unusual about the Harry Potter movies is to find a ginger kid with friends. I am joking, of course. Despite a bumpy start in the first year and some memorable arguments, Ron and Hermione become good friends and eventually do get married. Next, we have Professor Albus Percival Wolfric Brian Dumbledore. This is the HP008 version, which appears in four sets and is worth about $7. Unusually for the early LEGO Harry Potter minifigures, we actually have some printing on the legs. This has some really nice gold detail, including a coin purse hanging from his belt. By removing the beard, you can see the continuity of the printing from the torso onto the legs. I'm not certain if this is meant to be Dumbledore's skin or whether it's some kind of yellow garment. When the figures were re-released with flesh-coloured heads and hands, the torso print was recycled and still had yellow underneath the robes. The facial print is wizardly enough, but doesn't really look like the actor Richard Harris who played Dumbledore in the first two movies. Around the back, we can take a closer look at Dumbledore's purple cape and, of course, that long grey hair. To complement the impressive mane, we have a luxurious moustache and beard. I like the way these come together at the side to give some continuity. He's a really nice colourful minifigure and the second most valuable one in this set. This big fella is the HP009 Rubius Hagrid. Hagrid is relatively easy to find but still commands a resale value of $6. Unlike later Hagrid minifigures, this version comes mostly assembled. The only elements we have to add are the face with this rather creepy facial print and the squishy hair and beard element which is black for some reason. The body and legs are a single assembly which is snapped together in the factory. The arms are also pre-assembled and these are quite unusual. Unlike other minifigures, our half-giant Hagrid has fingers. The torso print shows Hagrid's many layers of clothing and includes a silver metallic belt buckle. Hagrid doesn't always make the best choices, especially when it comes to befriending magical creatures. But he is fiercely loyal to Hogwarts and should absolutely be in this set. Next, we have the poetically persistent poltergeist, Peeves. 
We did it, we bashed them, we potters the one, and Voldy's gone mouldy, so now let's have fun. Peeves has been the resident poltergeist at Hogwarts since it was founded in the year 993. It's said that it just came with the building. From the back, you could be forgiven for thinking this is just a monochrome minifigure. The torso print is kind of ethereal, and you can see some representation of clothing. Peeves appears in two sets and is worth about $4. I also don't think we've seen the last of this guy. Moving swiftly on, we have a HP012 Severus Snape who appeared in four sets and is worth about $4. He reminds me of Lord Farquhar from Shrek and is looking decidedly off colour. I suppose this is a reference to the fact that Snape tends to appear in dark corridors at night, illuminated by a candle. Just like Dumbledore, we have printing on the torso and also on the legs. I don't recall Snape wearing purple, so I'm guessing the colour is just there to highlight against the black. Snape's cape is pure black, just like his long greasy hair. Despite the inclusion of phosphors in the minifigure's head to make him glow in the dark, this is actually a pretty good likeness of Snivellus Snape. Next, we come to the most valuable minifigure from this set. This is the HP015 Gryffindor Knight. It's an exclusive, and it's worth about $10. Confirming the knight's allegiance, we have this rather nice red and gold Gryffindor shield. He's also holding a pretty standard Lego sword, and has this super detailed helmet. In fact, looking at that closely, I think I'm being watched. What's in there? Oh, it's Peeves! Yes, hiding within the Gryffindor statue, we have a Peeves. This guy really gets around. Whilst not exclusive, the hinged visor is a really nice and detailed part. There's also an armoured breastplate which goes over the minifigure's body. It's a really nice element and also provides some protection for the shoulders. The other thing to note is a hole in the top of the visor into which you could insert a plume. This is a really nice minifigure and probably my favourite from the set. It really helps that we have peeves inside the helmet. Of course this wouldn't be a Hogwarts castle set without the boy what lived. This is the HP 036 Harry Potter and he appears in three sets. Being a Harry Potter, he's not worth very much and resells for about $4. Although it was very tempting, I'm not going to let any Harry Potter puns slither into the script. Harry has the same legs and torso as Hermione and Ron. You will, however, notice that Harry has a different coloured cape. Although I wasn't able to confirm this for certain, I presume the purple cape is because this is meant to be the cape of invisibility. The facial expression is the one that's used on all of the early LEGO Harry Potter minifigures. It definitely looks like Harry Potter with the trademark glasses, although the lightning-shaped scar seems to be in the wrong place. The hair is suitably unkempt and perfect to crown the Chosen One. He's not exclusive and he's not particularly rare, but he is just Harry. The final minifigure from this set is the HP040 Draco Malfoy. The legs and the cape match those of Hermione and Ron. What is different here is the torso print, which is of course a Slytherin print. We have the Slytherin house crest and some really nice green and silver printing. The facial print is quite muted and doesn't really capture the Malfoy sneer. The hair is neat and tidy and I guess a good match for the young Draco Malfoy. How does Malfoy keep his hair so perfect? He uses a Dracomb! Like many of the early LEGO Harry Potter characters, this doesn't really resemble the on-screen actor. It's just close enough, but not really movie accurate. Overall, the 4709 Hogwarts Castle comes with a nice range of minifigures. Most of these you would expect to see in this set, but the addition of Peeves and the Gryffindor Knight really helps to lift the selection. So that was set number 4709, the very first Hogwarts Castle from LEGO Harry Potter. Finally, my collection of Hogwarts Castle reviews is done. Until LEGO decide to do it again, of course. It's not quite in the same league as the LEGO sets we get today, but I really do like this. Now, of course, this does include some modular components, and for very good reason. If we refer back to the LEGO catalogue from 2001, LEGO invites us to build our very own Hogwarts. In fact, that would make quite a good video. This might not be in the same league as the very latest sets with all their stickers and movie-accurate minifigures, but it really is a charming thing. I love the old-school flip-open box, and those old-school yellow-faced minifigures. The interiors may have been a little lacking in detail, but I love the inclusion of the little interactive features, and unique printed parts like the Fat Lady's portrait. Now I can't wait to see how this looks when it's combined with other 2001 LEGO Harry Potter sets. That might be coming sooner than you think. 
As always, I've really enjoyed sharing this classic LEGO Harry Potter set with you. It's one of my favourite things to do. If you enjoyed it as much as I did, a thumbs up is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome LEGO Harry Potter content. Thanks a million for checking out today's review, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next build video.